extremely strenuous exercise may decrease butyrate producing bacteria. Oh, do this! If you want to increase butyrate producing bacteria, that's something I'm going to talk about today, so stick around. Hi, my name is Hachiaki Takamiya. I am the author of the Ikigai Diet and Ikigai Biohacking. This is the fourth video in the series of the longevity bacteria found in Japanese centenarian. The first video is this one. The actual title was uh, what is the longevity bacteria discovered in Japanese centurions? The Kyotango study explained. And in this video, I talked about the Kyotango region in Kyoto Prefecture because it is known as a longevity hotspot in Japan at the moment. And there is a study called Kyotango Longevity Cohort Research happening. And in this research, they discovered that what they call the longevity bacteria, which is butyrate producing bacteria, is abundant in the gut of the senior citizens in the Kyotango region. And in the second video, the actual title is How to Increase the Longevity Bacteria Found in Japanese Centurions. I basically shared with you the ways to increase butyrate producing bacteria through diet, such as eating food with highly fermentable dietary fiber or vitamin B1 and vitamin D, omega-3 fatty acids such as DHA and EPA, and fermented food with bifidobacteria lactic acid bacteria, and natto bacteria. And in the third video, the actual title was How to Increase the Longevity Bacteria Found in Japanese Centurions Beyond the Diet. I talked about some other measures to, in to grow butyrate-producing bacteria, uh, such as sleep, optimizing your sleep, and then aligning yourself with a circadian rhythm, and exercise, especially moderate intensity exercise that leaves you slightly breathless. And doing this kind of exercise for 30 minutes to 60 minutes a day, three times a week is recommended. I also say doing zone two exercise, 150 minutes to 180 minutes per week is the optimal. However, I also say, find a way that is comfortable and sustainable because this is critical for butyrate producing bacteria. And I said, I was going to explain why in the next video. So that is what I'm doing in this video. So I'm explaining why finding a way comfortable and sustainable is good for butyrate producing bacteria. In other words, not finding a way comfortable and sustainable isn't good for butyrate producing bacteria. And there are some other activities that are not good for this bacteria. So that is what I'm talking about in today's video. Please watch the video until the end. Again, I am referencing this book by Dr. Yuji Naito, a researcher of the Kyotango Longevity Cohort Study. Lakusan Kyo Fuyaseba, Kenko Chojin Nareru. English translation is kind of roughly translation. I kind of translated it. Uh, you can increase your health span if you increase butyrate producing bacteria. The first thing is reverse of what we have talked about, such as, but diet. It means low fiber diet. The idea was to consume a lot of fiber. So diet with low fiber is bad. Also, Dr. Naito talks about high fat diet isn't good for butyrate producing bacteria. And the diet that lacks in diversity. 
diversity is the key. The next one is sedentary lifestyle, lack of exercise, and lack of sleep, and then not aligning with the circadian rhythm. So what else can damage the butyrate producing bacteria or reduce the effect of increasing butyrate producing bacteria? Uh, one is alcohol. Right. We all know it. Alcohol isn't good for us. And recently, many people talk about a negative effect of alcohol. So it is better to stay away from alcohol. However, it's not that easy, is it? I mean, we all know alcohol is bad, but we continue to drink because there's so much benefit. I mean, as far as the your mental state is concerned, you know, uh, from alcohol, that's why people continue drinking. Right. Sometimes alcohol serves your ikigai. It's like, a, you know, it makes you want to live because you get together with your friends and you have a you know, few drinks and you have a great conversation. And so we cannot uh, ignore this positive aspect of alcohol. So what can we do? But it can damage our gut bacteria in general. I mean, not only butyrate producing bacteria, just gut microbiome in general alcohol isn't good. So what I suggest is Hare and Ke method. Hare and Ke are Japanese concept. Hare means festivals and celebrations. Ke means usual and everyday life. We distinguish between Hare and Ke. So during the Ke period, which is like a usual period, we try to have frugal meals. But during the Hare period, the festive occasion, we have feast. So in the Ikigai diet, I am, I am applying this concept and making the weekdays to be K period and the weekend to be Hare periods. And you can apply many, you can incorporate many things into this schedule. For example, when you practice fasting, you can only fast during the week, but not on the weekend. You can take a break on the weekend. Or when you practice plant-based diet, you can stay on a plant-based diet as much as possible during the week. But on the weekend, you can relax and eat whatever you like. And the same thing is true with alcohol. You just don't drink during the week. And then you only drink on the weekend. This way, uh, you are optimizing your sleep during the week because, again, alcohol also affects your sleep too. If you don't drink, uh, it can help your sleep quality more. So during the week, you can optimize your sleep, which will help your, you know, butyrate producing bacteria and many other things. But on the weekend, which is a hard period, you can just enjoy, relax, and so that you have this balance. It's not perfect, but still, it's better than drinking all the time. So I think it is a kind of a sweet spot, like sort of middle ground that is sustainable. And when you drink, there are certain hacks that you can do to mitigate the effect. Choose organic red wine or anything that you like, but not high alcohol content. So less than 12.5%, for example, and no uh, antioxidant added. And drink a glass of water after every glass. That helps dilute the alcohol content. And then have natto as a starter. That also helps. And have miso soup as a finale. So start with natto, drink some wine, and end with miso soup. This is the trick. For details about alcohol and how to optimize your drinking and, you know, effect of alcohol and everything, a lot more in details, a lot more in details, please watch this video. The actual title is, Should We Stop Drinking for Longevity? The next one that can harm butyrate producing bacteria is antibiotics. In fact, any bacteria, any gut bacteria, antibiotics aren't good for any gut bacteria. 
Of course, there are times that you need to take them, but you don't need to take them when it is not necessary. Some people take antibiotics even, even just for common cold. You don't need to take antibiotics for cold. Tr try to avoid it as much as you can. Also, certain food contain antibiotics such as meat if it is factory farmed. They keep livestock closely in a narrow space. They have to inject antibiotics. If you eat it every day, that can accumulate and it may have some effect. And the same thing is true with farmed fish. I eat fish, but I don't eat farmed fish. I choose wild caught fish. In Kyotango, they eat a lot of wild caught fish because wild caught fish is available a lot there. The third thing that can harm butyrate producing bacteria is stress. Of course, it is stress. Stress isn't good for us. It is also a cause of cancer. Now, we all know that for chronic stress isn't good for our health and longevity. But what some people don't know or they may know it, but they tend to do is creating stress by doing some health measures. That's what I meant to buy this exercise business. So I said that find a way comfortable and sustainable and don't push yourself. This is precisely the reason. Yeah, it can give you some stress if you push yourself too hard. Now, uh, extremely strenuous exercise may decrease butyrate producing bacteria. A study on gut microbiota conducted by Juntendo University on Japanese ultramarathon runners found that Extremely strenuous exercise may decrease butyrate-producing bacteria in the gut and potentially affect immune function. Additionally, a study comparing the intestinal environment of rugby players from Setsunan University with that of healthy individuals revealed that some players had high levels of cynic acid, which causes diarrhea, reaching the level of patient with colitis. Furthermore, 22 out of the 87 rugby players who participated in the study had butyrate levels below the detection limit, which means very low. It is believed that factors such as physical exhaustion due to intense exercise and training, excessive stress in pursuing game result and performance, and living in unfamiliar environments, including overseas expeditions, are contributing to the deterioration of the intestinal environment. So it's not only the exercise. It's not only the intensity of the exercise. It's the kind of mental stress with the kind of traveling and other things as well. If you're interested, you may want to check out this, my other video. It's called, Is Marathon Good for Longevity? I touch upon a similar topic here. So what can we do? Um, now, exercise is very individual thing. It, the what is stressful and what is comfortable changes depending on individual. For some people, doing ultra marathon is perfectly fine. Others, it is hell. I'm not suggesting that rugby or ultra marathon uh, can be harmful for butyrate producing bacteria. It's really up to individual. But I think the idea is if the exercise is strenuous enough to give you stress, that might cause some deterioration in your gut microbial environment. So the idea is to find exercise that is challenging enough, yet comfortable enough. Maybe in the beginning, better to start with comfortable exercise. You don't need to worry about challenging. Just do whatever exercise you feel comfortable. That's how I started. I started going Nordic walking. It was comfortable. I enjoyed it every single day. Therefore, I could do it every day, or actually in my case, it was five days a week, but I could continue doing it for a long time because it was comfortable. 
there was no stress. But now I started increasing my intensity a little bit. So I do go jogging these days. So adding a little challenge each time is critical for your health. So find an activity that is challenging enough, yet comfortable enough. Do not do something too hard or too strenuous. And it doesn't matter if others are doing harder exercises, just choose one that is comfortable and sustainable for you. This is similar to the concept of hormesis. The idea of hormesis is a small amount of poison can be beneficial, but too much becomes a poison. So think of exercise as hormesis. Apply a small amount that gives you just the right level of stimulus. Especially if you're retired. That means you have worked all your life under pressure. You have had so much stress in your life already. Now it's the first time in your life to relax and enjoy, to lead a stress-free life. Do not add another stress. Just enjoy your life. Find activity that makes you feel happy and healthy at the same time. Don't push yourself. That is very critical for your gut health, but for longevity in general. That is something I feel by observing all those centenarians. They, they lead a stress-free life. They enjoy their life. They don't push themselves too much. Also, you, you may want to check out this, my other video. It's called Don't Work Out for Longevity if you want to increase your Ikigai. All right, so to sum up, stay away from bad diet, sedentary lifestyle, lack of sleep, not aligning with a circadian rhythm, alcohol, antibiotics, and stress. Now I said, Dr. Naito said, lack of diversity in your diet is a problem, and good way is to practice Ichiju Sansai. Ichiju sansai uh, means like a one soup and three side dishes. So usually in Japan, we have a miso soup and a bowl of rice and one pickle dish and then three side dishes. It creates diversity. So make small dish, but wide variety so that you can include different kind of fiber and different kind of, you know, you can include fermented food, different kind of fiber and things. So it kind of makes your meal diverse. This is the key to finding a diverse meal. For details, please read the Ikigai Diet. Okay, thank you for watching. Again, my name is Hachiyaki Takamiya, the author of the Ikigai Diet and Ikigai Biohacking. If you like this video, please give me your thumb up and subscribe to my channel. And please leave your comment. Which of the activities that are not to do uh, are you doing? Thank you. Well, I will see you in the next video. Live with your Ikigai!